Jank Brew is brought to you by Nissa Ascended Animist, modern day creator of Behemoth. Nissa Ascended Animist is a legendary planeswalker, pleated, which means you can use some Phyrexian mana to cast her for five, six, or seven. Um, plus one creates an XX green Phyrexian horror creature token where X is Nissa Ascended Animist loyalty. Sometimes we'll be doing that. Minus one, destroy it, target artifact or enchantment. Every great once in a while, we'll be doing that. But mostly what we want to be doing here today is Nissa sent an Animus minus seven, which says until end of turn, creatures you control get plus one, plus one for each forest you control gain train. Much like the Crater Hoof uh, Behemoth decks of Era's past, well, Standard's past, and Era's present if you play other formats, uh, we want to play Nissa Ascended Animus and win on the spot. Um, and to do that, we need a lot of forests. So we'll move uh, just straight down the line here uh, to Vorinclex. Um, only other big piece of action we've got going on here. Um, Vorinclex is a 6-6 six, six with Trample and Reach, or 5, 3 plus 2 green. And when Vorinclex enters the battlefield, we search for two forest cards, reveal them, and put them into our hand. Uh, probably won't use the... Uh, the Flipped version, the Grand Evolution version of Vorinclex, uh, but every once in a while, it's there. Um, so Vorinclex helps us get forests. Obviously, Invasion of Zendikar helps us get forests. It's a siege uh, that says when it enters the battlefield, we search our library for up to two basic land cards, put them onto the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle. Um, so that's a, a healthy way to ramp. Um, we also have on the ramp front Topiary Stomper, just a pair of these. Um, in multiples, they've become... A little bit worse in this deck, uh, especially in Best of One, where we run into a lot of aggressive decks, and not being able to do anything until you have seven lands often gets killed. So, not as many Topiary Stompers as you may expect, but if you've got your own Jank Brew, you may want to reconsider that. Um, we're going to pause on the ramp front for a second and talk about staying alive. Um, Tranquil Frillback is an interesting dinosaur here. It's a 3-3 three, three for 3. When enters the battlefield, we can pay... Forest, uh, one green mana up to three times. When we pay this cost, one or more times, choose up to that many from below. So we can destroy a target, artifact, or enchantment. Definitely sometimes helpful against main decks. Um, exile target player's graveyard, which is helpful against uh, reanimate decks um, and the domain deck, honestly. Um, and even sometimes for keeping uh, Goblin Dude from, uh, from flashing back. Um, and gaining four life, obviously great against... Uh, Aggressive decks, red in particular, sometimes we just need four life to not die. Um, just because this is Jank Bruce, we've got a couple copies of Pelucranos. Um, this deck reminds me of Mono Green Devotion from the first Devotion set with uh, Nick the Shrine to Nix. Um, and I played Mono Green Devotion a, a lot during that format. So Pelucranos is a, a throwback to that era. Not a bad magic card. Um, and again, just intended to keep us alive. Four or five with reach for three. We got all, we got all the forests to play it, so we're running a couple of Pelucranos. Um, and then back to the ramp strategy. Um, this is really the the piece that fits the puzzle best with uh, Nissa. It's awaken the woods sorcery for green green X, where X is uh, green forest dryad land creature tokens. Um, so these are not only creatures that can attack, but they count as forests. Uh, for Nissa's minus seven ability, um, often the tick, uh, the trick to winning. So other than that, we've got a little bit of jank at the front end. Um, Armored Scrap Gorger, good for uh, staying alive, blocking some, some chumps at the beginning, and uh, potentially exiling something from a graveyard. Uh, got a pair of Bramble Familiars. Uh, this is probably the most questionable play. It's a creature. It ramps us. For really what we want to be doing is cast it, casting a turn three Invasion of Zendikar. Um, and it's a 2-2, so it's got a, a decent uh, attack if we happen to need to be aggressive. Um, uh, but very rarely are we going to use the Fetch Quest, as you'd uh, see in some of the five-color decks. Um, it's just not that great here, where we mill seven cards, put a creature enchantment or land from among them onto the battlefield. All we really want late game is Nissa, and it doesn't hit that. Uh, so arguably these should be cut for something else. You decide. Um, Land of War Loam Speaker, pretty self-explanatory in our strategy here. Got a couple of bushwhacks, either uh, to make sure we have lands when we need them or to just get that uh, last forest that we might need. Got a single copy of Tamiyo Safekeeping. Um, keep a relevant creature around, gain a little bit of life um, if we need to against uh, Red, which we see most often in Best of One. And then a single copy of Tyvar's Stand. Uh, Again, these are certainly questionable and could probably be other cards. 
Um, we're going to roll with this. Back tech over. Let's get to it. We are battling in, uh, this is the second day of the new season. We're battling, I think, still in um, Platinum 4. Got a ways to go. I tend to brew a bunch of jank, stuff that I don't expect to be particularly good around this time. Um, because losing isn't that detrimental. You can't you can't go beyond uh, Platinum 4. And then so far, we're just a hair over 500 um, with our first two decks. So... I think this is a, uh, I don't know, an okay hand. Um, if it didn't have Boron Collects, it would be a mulligan. But I think we're going to keep this and hope we get the Boron Collects and thereby to some other action. Fiend's Tower. It's them most likely on Rafine or uh, Domain. I don't know how this deck is going to perform against either of those. Looking more like Rafine when I see a Dark Slick Scrolls. Yeah. So we're on Rafine Legends. And they just slam Rafine here and attack. Uh, could be bad. Uh, we, we can get to... Boron collects next turn. Deep Cavern Bat um, is a little, uh, really extra annoying because they're going to get Boron collects, I would imagine. And in so doing, ruin our next turn. Doesn't even put anything in our graveyard. We can fetch out with Scrap Gorger. Okay, we have Anissa Ascended Animist. It's not when we want it. Um, and it is an, a little tempting to play it here for five, make a four four. Um, but we're not going to do that just because I'd like to back it up with Bushwhack and or Timio Safekeeping uh, so I can get the Warren Collects back. So we're going to do nothing. And hope they don't slam Rafine here. Gildred, the Apocalypse, also bad. Okay, Blucranos is interesting. Six, maybe maybe we wait a hair on I might just bushwhack the cavern bat. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how else to get rid of the cavern bat. It would be nice to get born clex, but we could also save the bushwhack the fight. Shield rid with Anissa Ascended Animate token next turn. Um, but we would have to draw another forest for that. Um, in which case, I think I'm going to go ahead and bushwhack off the Cavern Bat. It is kind of annoying that uh, Denik prevents us from exiling cards from the graveyard. This is a good deck for, for anyone interested in standard brewing. Um, yeah, we're going to safe keep Pelucranos. Yeah, so curiously, we'll, we'll hopefully be able to resolve this here. Yeah. Um, get our forests. Play yet another Scrap Gorger. Pass. 
close to the point where we might just be able to win. Um, 7 times 4 is 28. So we got 28 plus our actual power on board. Uh, and they just lost, arguably, uh, five toughness. They're going to go probably to, see, it'd be 31 if they draw off kicks, because they'll lose one. So 31. I still think we probably win, even though the, technically 33, thanks to Denik. Pretty close. But I don't think we block here. If they don't draw a land, which is, I think, what they're looking for, then they probably don't have any play. Well, that makes it a little bit harder. If we're 11. We would be able to put, let's see. If they remove one, the problem is we are in big trouble. Um, because then we would only have 7 times 3, 21 plus 4. We're not even close. Uh, Alternatively, we, we could play Nissa and plus risk losing it. Um, hmm. I think that's going to be our play. We're going to play Nissa and plus. Uh, but let's see. Yeah, I guess I'm going to do that first. I hate letting them know ahead of time, but. It's countered, then all of this discussion has been for naught. No counter. Um, they don't have removal, we would just win. But we're going to be a little conservative. Could be wrong. What a bastard for Clux. We have to jump off of the Scrap Gorger, that's okay. Oh, Rafine is a little scary. <laughs> I'm really surprised to see the attack, not at Nyssa. I guess maybe it doesn't matter a ton. Yeah. We're going for it now. No question about it. I'm not sure if they're quite dead. They'll have to wipe. See, it's, it's really close. <laughs> I didn't even do the math. We got 30 plus... In this case, definitely dead. We'll take it. 12, yeah, they were dead regardless. <clears throat> Onward to game two. <laughs> Don't mind my dog. <laughs> Two Nissas in an opening hand with just a bushwhack and Tamiya's safekeeping is pretty bad. So we're gonna mull this. Almost accidentally click. Um, this isn't a ton better. But it's keepable. Man, I wish it was seven. It'd be a fine seven. It's not nearly as good as six. Um, I think we're going to cut Awake in the Woods. 
this case, I may just bushwhack on turn one to get the forest. So we can, if, if uh, Lone Speaker does get removed, be able to invasion on three. Veterans, this is the okay, interesting. Um, probably means the lone speaker doesn't get removed. Oh, both vendor, interesting. All right. Yeah, I wish I had the other bushwhack back. But here we go. I'm gonna ramp so pretty much our deck is on board. Even Nissa right now is fine. I'd be able to cast it for seven and start plussing against these little guys. Might not be so bad. Most of our deck is online. Why they wouldn't do one? Okay, so there's there's Nissa three, four, five, six. Oh. Um, hmm. do I plus? Do I just play Nissa and plus? Get an eighty. I mean, they could if they remove that. Hard. It'll be really annoying. Um, so I'm kind of inclined to just tranquil frill back, gain some life, uh, and fight the spellbook uh, spellbook vendor. Just so I have another blocker for Nissa next turn. Last, neither of these are. <clears throat> In for life. <laughs> Curiously, like I could fight off the intrepid adversary, but I think I think I'm gonna fight uh, the spellbook vendor. Um, hope this works out. I'm assuming they have something, or they would have put the. Sorcerer roll token on a creature. These end up trading Shark Roll and Hexproof. Okay, that's a little annoying because I, I was going to fire up this guy and dash at Invasion, force the trade here, but uh, no such luck. So on to the next turn. Use both of our bushwhacks, so we're out of removal. <laughs> Deck wide, I guess, unless you can't tranquil frill back. Which can remove things like Sorcerer's Roll Token. Ossification. Yeah, see, this would have been bad for Nissa. We would have had Nissa down to like one, because they'd have ossified the token she created. The Sorcerer's Roll, the Intrepid Adversary. We're going to be looking at taking some damage, and this also dies to their board. If they ossify a token again. Unless I draw a land, in which case I'd have a chump blocker in the form of Lone Speaker, which I guess is as good as anything here. And part of me wants to force them to trade off so I don't get that, but we're not going to do it. We're going to go here and make a dude. Just pray they don't have ossification or the human that will exile my 8 Namely, Brutal Cathar. 
All the regret. We'll be chumping off here. This will go to five. So we'll be on like a six six. Oh, maybe a little bit better than that now. I can make a five five by blocking the spellbook vendor, and then I'll still have a, a another blocker. I think I'm gonna do that. Um Yeah. Rather than lose. That is not especially helpful. I'm just gonna keep making dudes, and I think in this case I'm gonna hold on to this forest. And if they, if they play two spells here and then exile my 5-5, five five, it will be sad. Yeah, or, or just play another. Oh, nice! <laughs> it's nighttime. Gangster. I probably would have forgotten about that if I were them to. Tamiya's safekeeping is cool. Although, if we played two spells, we'd only be able to safekeep one of these. Uh, in this case, we're going to play the forest and pass. Don't two spell me, bro. I'm alright with this. I'm gonna keep making dudes. Could end up eating one of these guys. Safekeeping, but I think I'm not. I think I'm just gonna chill, make them do something first. So far they haven't been able to even play one spell, so... As long as they don't force me to cast Tamiya's safekeeping here. No flippity flippies. I could just die next turn. Have to do the math to see if um if they played Wandering Emperor and exile the biggest one. Well, I guess I have Tamiya safekeeping as of right now, so... 8 times 5 is 40 damage, plus what I have out there. Definitely enough to win, in spite of... or life gain. Clyde to just go for it, and we can safekeeping... thing that we might need to, so we're gonna try. Get a concession? We get a Wandering Emperor. Resolute reinforcements is a thing. Gaining a little life. Don't think it will be sufficient. Hexproof and indestructible. Fair. I still don't think that gets there. Are there any Convoke spells that are instants in white? I don't think so. Uh, so we'll get no Trample damage from there. They'll go to 40 or 38. But yeah, that's 
really far away from not dead. Part of me wants to save keeping there, but no reason to. All right, well, 2-0 to start the this uh, Animist's Jank Brew. Certainly be worse. Carrying on to game three. not the worst opening hand. I kind of like it. We're going we're to hang on to our bushwhack for now. Play with fire is the best thing that could happen to me on turn one against mono red. <laughs> uh, so I think we're going to run out of loam speakers because it's less likely to die to Spells that they have and more likely to be able to block. Charming Scoundrel is a great example. I'd rather keep my Loam Speaker. Er. Snap block. Tranquil Fillback uh, fill feels good here. Um, so the question is do we awaken the woods for two? Um, or do we just cast a Bramble Familiar and hold up Safekeeping? Hmm. It's pretty early. There is that, there is that, uh, gosh, that one spell that would hit all of our dudes, but I think we're just going to run out, um, Awaken the Woods for two. Hmm. That'll get more. How greedy do we want to be is the question. I'm going to go with not that greedy. <clears throat> Squee? Squee is annoying. But we're not gonna block here. Take our take our licks. Okay. Glad to get a forest there. Um, we now have seven mana to play with. Which can be Tranquil Fill Frill back. Uh plus fight. Um can remove this. Could potentially do all that stuff. And just hold up Tamiya as safekeeping. I don't know how badly I care about exiling the graveyard here. So I think we're going to pay... 2. Decline the 3rd so we have safekeeping. And so we're going to gain 4 life and destroy this... Uh, and then we'll bushwhack here and here. Maybe I'll regret that later. Let's see. Uh, holding up safekeeping is fine, I think. No attacks. They've got like monstrous roll or something. It'd be a nice counter to it. We might be in a situation where, um, interesting attack, almost, it has to be roll. Oh no, it could be the uh, burn spell, which is great here, because we're going to save him. And I don't think there's a one mana spell that can deal with that, so... Looking decent here. I kind of want to eat this guy rather than the Charming Scoundrel because they're essentially the same thing in this case, and one of them goes into the yard to help Squee. Uh, the other one doesn't. So there's Monstrous Rage. That's fine. 
I, that was great, really. Um, so we're probably going to do a thing that we very rarely do. We're not going to get the chance, because our opponent conceded. For probably good reason. That was looking out of hand for them. But we were going to cast the uh, adventure side of Bramble Familiar. All right, on to game four. Three and zero is a good place to be. It's the, it's the second day since uh, the season reset. Mm -hmm. If we have one more forest and our scrap gorger or bramble familiar doesn't get hit, this is not bad. So. We'll keep it. Um, second day since the, the season reset. Um, so we're, we're put to the bottom of Platinum. And let's see. I'm going to go with Scrap Gorger because it doesn't die to a shock effect. Um, and it, it may be in the next couple of days, depending on my schedule, that I play a non-janky bruise. I know that sounds uh, sounds bad, but I prefer to brew in diamond. Um, you get a little bit less mono red, um, and it's slow for me to get to diamond or mythic with with jank brews. Sometimes I can brew a whole season, and depending how badly I do at it, uh, I don't get there at all. So we're gonna run out invasion here. Tempted to do Topiary Stomper first, but I, I don't really care about being aggressive. We just need to not die, uh, and then play Nissa and win the game. I'm curious about these these new takes on red that are playing Casting Flame Breather and Thermo Alchemist. Uh, I don't know if they're good or not, but let's see. We've got Six available to us. We have Vorinclex plus Bramble Familiar holding up nothing. Um, I think that's the play. I think it's a Vorinclex plus Bramble Familiar hold up nothing. Because it gets us two forests. And that's probably enough to just straight up win. Especially like with Tamiyo safe safekeeping as a backup. Uh, well, I wouldn't have Tamiyo safekeeping as a backup once I attacked. But I. Oh. Huh. Okay. So we're going to burn a couple lightning strikes on Boring Clex. Fair. Fair. Okay. So run out our other forest. We we can't win on the spot here. So it's a pretty simple turn, I imagine, of just Topiary Stomper, Armored Scrap Gorger. We've got Tamiya's safekeeping as a backup. We have a crap load of forests now. So this game seems pretty well in hand. Can't think of uh, really anything they could do from this point, unless they can hit us for 17 this turn. Uh, or unless they're playing blue and I just don't know it, like like there's about to be a counter spell out here. Yeah. Very much looks like we're going to four now. Ends resolve. Fair. Mountain. Uh, so we can we can actually bushwhack for another forest. Don't, I don't think we need it, but uh, we'll, we'll bushwhack for another forest anyway. There's Nissa maxed out. Emio safekeeping back up. Emio safekeeping seems pretty decent. Good game.
I appreciate them allowing us to attack there. We don't have any uh, daily goals to hit, but uh, sometimes we do, and it's nice to be allowed to attack. But we do have a daily goal. It's just uh, black and red spells, which I'll get to later. I have a lot of black and red brews to roll out, jank brews. In fact, we ran out some yesterday. So we'll save that for another time uh, and move on to game five, 4-0. So far, so good. Improving that roughly 50% win rate from our other jank brews. Hmm. I don't know about this. <laughs> uh, it's not the worst uh, hand I've ever seen, but it's going to need some help from the top of the deck. Or we could end up using this Bramble Familiar ability. So we're, we're going to try this. We're 4-0. We're we got to be a little bit saucy. Our hand keeps... Um, so in this case, I guess, uh, Loam Speaker's probably better than Scrap Gorger. If we're playing against, um, okay, you can cut down anyone. Well, I'm glad we didn't run out Bramble Familiar. Um, Topiary Stomper is kind of curious here. I think it's, like, mana efficiency-wise better to play this, and we're not, again, trying to be aggressive at all, so Topiary, Topiary Stomper it is. Um, okay, that's kind of interesting. So I guess we're probably playing against um, Golgari mid-range, which is a great deck. Uh, I think Deep Cavern Bat is a decent addition to it. And that adventure guy that, like, doesn't die, multiplies. I forget what he's called. Um, but that card's insane. It's a two-drop. Mm, okay, so we're probably just going to Awaken the Woods here. Uh, again, they count as forests and lands, so it helps Topiary Stomper. Um, kind of annoying that we didn't draw the land, so we can't hit it otherwise, but... This would be great to be just bashing for four here. Without Nissa or any other gas. Shield right here. Okay, Mosswood Dread Knight. There's the card I was talking about. Mosswood Dread Knight. Great magic card. Annoying for us, but a great magic card. Um, okay, so we're gonna be able to, if, if they have like, you know, creatures get minus minus something or other, we're in big trouble here, but we don't care about that. We're just gonna, we're just gonna bash hard. Um, two, three, four, five. Yeah, straight up. We're just gonna... We're gonna allow our Topiary Snopper to attach, attack. Now, if, if we draw on this, uh, we automatically win, uh, which is, which is nice. So we just need the top of our deck to help us out with Anissa. If it does, pretty much game over. I can't, I can't think of anything they'd be able to do about that. Um, we, are, we are not there yet. Um, I'm inclined to just... I don't, don't have any... Nothing to hit with Tranquil Frill back yet. Um, but I don't know it's doing me a ton of good in my hand either. I'm just play it, exile this cut down. Like what, I'm trying to think what this deck plays that I might want out of the graveyard, or I might... I don't know. We're just going to roll it. Activate all the abilities. Or the two relevant ones, anyway. Gain some life, exile this dude's graveyard. I don't I don't really want to send this stomper in there because I, yeah, there aren't any great trades. <clears throat> Shieldred does provide some inevitability. Come on, Nissa. In about six turns to get there, it seems. Yep. Invasion of Zendikar does not get us there. It does thin the deck out a little bit. I suppose next to...
Blissa. I don't know. It's getting even more inevitable. Target that. Okay, I'm just gonna eat that. Wake in the woods. So I get a little counter. Right. Yep. Yeah. Make him think I have something. All right, well. I don't know that I care about the Scrap Gorger getting anything from that. So we're going to do some chumping here. Consider killing one of these guys. I don't know, I could consider killing both of them, or at least trying to kill both of them. Make them like, you know, burn some removal. Uh, I think I'm going to chump off uh, with Scrap Gorger Glissa. be wrong. They could just kill one of these, which they very likely will. Uh, so I could I could just slam all of these guys in front of Graveyard Glutton. See if he wants to kill. I guess he could kill up to four of them. Which is annoying if we're hoping to get Nissa off the top. So we're gonna... Actually, I'm just gonna do this. Right. We're going to need that Nissa pretty soon. You have another invasion of Zendikar. <laughs> we have all the forests we could possibly need. We do need creatures to be able to attack. So we're just gonna we're gonna block here, we're gonna block here. Um we'll probably block here. Leaves us four creatures. We we really need to draw this to this turn though. Yeah, they, they would die regardless, um, even if they had removal two. Well, now if they had removal for two, they would not die, but we're going to have to take that risk. Really. Well, in all probability, we've died. In fact, we are definitely dead because we can't block the Deep Cavern Bat and we're going to lose two life when we draw next turn. So, sad as it is, we're going to go to 4-1 and one and concede. And get lucky on not tanking down one tier. Moving on to game six at four and one. Mono green Nissa. You're on Jank Bruce. Hmm. This is not great. There are a few things I like about it. We're gonna try. I easily regret that decision. So 
Sea Chrome. So next turn we probably bushwhack if we don't hit a forest. Your X. Ugh, ugh. Oh. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Not good. I just don't like playing against this deck. There's just not a lot of relevant interaction now. I, I just feel like we're already dead. <clears throat> if I see two venerated rot priests, I feel like dead. And they have um, an effect. In the blue, blue sun, I forget exactly, but... Um, Bushwhack doesn't feel all that great here against them because it gives them a counter and then I'm sure they have a response to that giving us even more counters. So I think we're going to Bushwhack for a forest. Play Lone Speaker as another blocker. We'll still be able to hold up Tyvar's stand and Hopefully not get any poison counters right away. This is a deck that can definitely just win out of nowhere. We might start seeing it. Um, I don't know how to play around the blue sun. We have a, a pretty clear... Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Three venerated rot priests. Ugh. Are we dead? We could definitely just be dead here. Sure. All day. All day. We'll, we'll eat our own bushwhack. Okay, I was definitely hoping to get a forest there. Uh, so the question is, do we awaken the woods? We play Invasion. Hmm. Awake in the Woods, we could get four. We'd have to chump with three of them. I, I just don't know that I can take any damage. Uh, these really would have been nice to get just there. Yeah, these guys can block, the others can't. So we're going to play Invasion. We really just got to hope that our opponent has not a lot of ways to target their own dudes. So, I mean, we could straight up just be dead. Um, two... Yeah, okay. Yeah. Good game. <laughs> I like it. I mean, I hate playing against this deck, but it's good. Got that, I guess the okay, yeah, March of the Swirling Mist is what I what I meant for Blue Sun. It's just, it's not fun that you can't even interact with it. Alright. Four and two. We were two, two turns away from winning there. Got lucky again and didn't tick down into Platinum 4. 
All right, last game of stream here, game seven. Sitting at four and two with mono green at Nissa. All right, we're getting pretty lucky with going first, um, and this is not bad if we if we hit just one more land. Um, we don't have our dork removed. This is pretty decent. I liked our opponent's avatar. Can't remember the name of the character, but I think it might might have been Bor Borborygmos. There's a Borborygmos in standard that I want to brew around pretty hard. Five glass siren. Okay. Another Nissa is not really what we wanted to see here. Um, I think we're gonna go Lone Speaker. Really hope to get a land. If our opponent just casts stuff and we draw land, we're in decent shape. I'm not super savvy to Spyglass Siren decks. I mean, there's there's like the uh, green blue versions, green black. I get this Soul Cauldron. I think this is a cool magic card, and I've got a brew working with that. And alas, we did not get there. Uh, so it's just going to be Scrap Gorger. I don't want to put a card in the yard. Um, and no reason to not bash, I suppose. One point of damage. Land of War beatdowns. Maybe there's a mono blue Agatha's Soul Cauldron? Oh, okay. Yeah, I've seen this a, a, a decent bit. Um, yeah, we're, we're just not going to do anything. We really need to get some land. Okay. Not a bad place to start. So do we just awaken the woods for three? Or do we invasion first? Gotta live a couple of turns. Invasioning first would allow us to get a lot more Wake in the Woods tokens. And then as long as we resolve the Nissa, we would win. Let's have Trample. Okay. Not having Trample is good for us. So I think I think we're gonna go. Let's see. This when a creature card is exiled this way. So maybe I would rather have Armored Scrap Gorger just so I could potentially respond to that. So we're going to Invasion. I have to Chump Block. Chump Block. Let's go here. Not going to do anything. Okay, so they are on green two. The three mana cost Merfolk. It's a fun card that creates map tokens. Um, five, six, twenty, seven. Activated abilities. I might just chump lock while I can. Four, five, six. Not sure. I mean, I held, them, I held them back for the potential of, like, if they if they played another in Soul Artifact, then I was definitely going to jump block. So here's Awake in the Woods. Um, three. So I think I'm going to Awaken for three, just to potentially play around. Or counter, and I'm in trouble. So maybe maybe just three. And in that case, I'm probably just going to play this other Scrap Gorger. More creatures on board. Sure. Probably chump block with this Scrap Gorger. Still would really like to hit a land next. I 
running away. We're gonna allow a creature to have the activated abilities of Scrap Gorger. Gain some life from that, right? Don't have a bunch of artifacts in the back. Ooh, kind of interesting. Um, seven. I have three creatures. I could just awaken the woods again. Tranquil fill fill back like blow up this thing. Um, gain some life. Uh, and maybe bait out. Okay. Well, bait it out to, to Shauna's Tide Binder. Which would have been bad for our Nissa effect. Ugh. I don't even think about that. Okay, so part of me thinks I could cast the Nissa and go up with it. If they bounce that thing, if they bounce both my dudes, I'd be dead. That's kind of annoying. So I think we're just going to. Uh, awaken for five. I only ask that you tap all of your mana and do something. It doesn't kill me. Kite Sail Arsonist. It is probable that we have one here. There's no more land to be played. Block. We have a lot of forests right now. Sure. There is yet another forest, and here's Anissa. Let's see. Oh, we want to use this. Looks like we're gonna have made it to five and two. Respectable finish for a pretty janky deck. Minus 91. Pretty cool way to go out with it. Thanks for watching. This will be on YouTube soon. Go cook some dinner.